is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 10 of the Trivia for Kids podcast. On Maracas, we have Craig. On recorder number one, we have Dan. On symbols, we have Look. Recorder two is Ren. And on harmonica, it's yours truly, Casey. We are the family madrigal. And there's the cat. Clover does not have an instrument. Play her own instrument. So what everybody may not know is we record our podcast in a tiny little closet under our stairs. But since it's episode 10, we thought we needed to celebrate with all five of us in here. And we are squashed. I make squash. And I think we're slowly running out of oxygen in this closet. So does anybody have a joke of the week? Yes. Go ahead, Quinn. Why don't pirates take a shower before they walk the plank? I don't know. I don't know why. They'll just wash up on shore later. Oh, oh. good one. Why don't people start to circles? Because there's no point. That was awesome. Thank you for the jokes. Now, should we get ready for the show? Let's do it. Here we go. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round one, the category is vegetables. Question one, what color bell pepper has the most vitamin C? Red, green, yellow, or orange? Question two, what color were carrots originally? Question three, what vegetable was used to make the first jack-o'-lanterns? Question four, what is the national vegetable of the United States? Question five, according to the popular legend, which vegetable is thought to repel vampires? Question six, which state produces the most potatoes? Question seven, which vegetable got its name from a precious stone? And now the answers to round one. Question one. What color bell pepper has the most vitamin C? Red, green, yellow, or orange? Red. Compared to green bell peppers, the red ones have almost 11 times more beta carotene and one and a half times more vitamin C. Ren, which bell pepper do you like the best? None. <laughs> That's why I was laughing when I asked you. I thought it was ironic that you picked that you wanted to do the vegetable category when you eat the least vegetables in our family, unless you count candy as a vegetable. Question two. What color were carrots originally? Purple. Would you eat a purple carrot? If it's healthier than orange carrots, yes. You do actually eat orange carrots. That's one vegetable that you will eat. Only with what, though? 
Ranch. Question three. What vegetable was used to make the first jack-o'-lanterns? The first jack-o'-lanterns were made in Ireland out of hollowed out turnips. I maybe should have made that one a multiple choice because I don't feel like turnips are a very popular vegetable. Have you ever had a turnip? No, I can answer that for you. You have not. Question four. What is the national vegetable of the United States? Pumpkin. Maybe it should have been the turnip. <laughs> Question five. According to the popular legend, which vegetable is thought to repel vampires? Garlic. I didn't know garlic was a vegetable. I don't know what else I would have thought it was, but I didn't think it was a vegetable. I guess a garlic bread is technically a vegetable. <laughs> and for all of you kiddos out there, vampires are not real. This is not a real question. This is a myth. Vampires are fake. Question six. Which state produces the most potatoes? Idaho. Did you know Idaho produces the most potatoes? That's just what they're famous for. Idaho potatoes. Is that the capital or what? <laughs> I live in Potato, Idaho. <laughs> No, the capital is Boise. Potatoes would be better. Question seven. Which vegetable got its name from a precious stone? Onion. In Latin, onion means large pearl. L large pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. The category is Sesame Street. Question one. Elmo has a goldfish for a pet. What is her name? Question two. What year did Sesame Street first appear on the air? 1969, 1979, or 1989? Question three. When they are not actually in them, how can you tell which bed belongs to Ernie and which bed belongs to his roommate, Bert? Question four. What is the name of Big Bird's teddy bear? Question five. When Sesame Street first began, which famous character was orange, but later changed to a different color? Question six. What is the name of the grocery store on Sesame Street? Question seven. Which monster has a superhero alter ego? Although, he usually just crashes into things and is not much help at all. And now the answers to round two. Question one. Elmo has a pet goldfish. What is her name? Dorothy. You used to love Sesame Street when you were little. Your second birthday party was Sesame Street themed. And you wore a cute little Elmo dress. I wore an El wait. Is there such thing as an Elmo dress? Was well, Elmo my favorite? Yes, you had. A, it, I mean, it was a dress with Elmo on it, and you were adorable. Question two: What year did Sesame Street first appear on the air? Nineteen sixty nine, nineteen seventy nine, or nineteen eighty nine? Nineteen sixty nine. Sesame Street is over fifty years old. It's crazy. It's been around that long. You've been around that long. No, I am not. <laughs> That's a joke. I am not. Hey, you stop that. <laughs> you stop that. Question three. When they are not actually in them, how can you tell which bed belongs to Ernie and which bed belongs to his roommate, Bert? Ernie's is marked with an E and Bert's with B. That would be an easy way to tell. Your bed is marked with a Q, and Ren's bed is marked with an R. 
What if two twins who had the same name slept in the same room and they both had different beds and they each were marked with R? They'd be like, no, that's my bed. That's my bed. That's my bed. Boy, that would sure be confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Question four. What is the name of Big Bird's teddy bear? Radar. Check the radar. It's a cuddle alert. Good one. <laughs> Question five. When Sesame Street first began, which famous character was orange, but later changed to a different color? Oscar the Grouch. The reason for the change is pretty simple. Jim Henson just decided that Oscar should be green. In the show, they explained that the reason he changed color was because Oscar went on vacation to Swamp Mushy Muddy and came back green. I think that was a good choice. Like, you coming back purple? No, I just mean changing Oscar from orange to green. I couldn't, I can't picture Oscar being, you know, living in a trash can and being anything but green. Question six. What is the name of the grocery store on Sesame Street? Hooper store. And for those of you that don't call it a grocery store and call it a supermarket, I apologize. What is the name of the supermarket on Sesame Street? Hooper store or Hooper supermarket. <laughs> Hooper's super market. <laughs> Hooper's super duper market. Pooper scooper market. Market. <laughs> supermarket. <laughs> Question seven. Which monster has a superhero alter ego? Although he usually just crashes into things and is not much help at all. Grover, who turns into Super Grover. It does seem like Super Grover, every time he comes into a scene, crashes into a tree or a house or something. And then when he's trying to solve the crime or whatever, the mystery or the, the problem, the, the people who have the problem in the first place figure it out and he takes the credit. How does he fly? Well, he's got a cape. Yeah, like a magic cape. Ooh. Yep. That's his special power. Round three. The category is music. Question one. How many strings does a harp have? 17, 47, or 77? Question two. What name is given to the thin round metal plates that come with a drum set? Question three. What is the name of the U.S. national anthem? Question four. What type of hair is the bow of a violin usually made from? Question five. What is a small flute called? Question six. Chopsticks is a piece of music composed for what instrument? Question seven. In the children's song, The Wheels on the Bus, what goes swish, swish, swish? And now the answers to round three. Question one. How many strings does a harp have? 17, 47, or 77? 47. I think the harp looks like such a difficult instrument to play. I, it would be hard to figure out like B flat, C, D flat, right. E. Because the guitar has six strings. And, I and think then a harp has like 47. Right, and the guitar is hard. I've tried to play that, so I couldn't imagine learning 47. So hats off to all you harp players out there. Woo! Question two. What name is given to the thin round metal plates that come with a drum set? Symbols! Question three. What is the name of the U.S. national anthem? The Star-Spangled Banner. 
Can you sing a little bit for us? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early night. Boy, they are getting a ton of music from us in this episode. You guys are lucky. Very. Question four. What type of hair is the bow of a violin usually made from? Horse hair. How do they get them? Like, I'm sure horses would kick them if you tried to get them from, like, the tail. Oh, that's a good question, because the mane hair isn't that long. So I wonder if it does come from the tail. But I do know that horses don't mind getting their hair cut, just like it's similar to getting your hair cut as a person. I don't think it hurts them or anything. So I don't think it would be difficult to get it from the mane, but from the tail, yeah, I would be concerned about the whole kicking thing. Question five. What is a small flute called? A piccolo. I play flute. Unfortunately, it's like an average size flute. It's not small. So since you play a normal flute, do you think that you could easily play a piccolo or are they very different? I've never really seen one, but I'm assuming it would be less room to put your fingers on. Yep, because I think they're quite small. Question six. Chopsticks is a piece of music composed for which instrument? Piano. It's called chopsticks because you strike the keys with a chopping motion. And here's an example. Question seven. In the children's song, the wheels on the bus, what goes swish, swish, swish? The wipers. And another song. The The wipers wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. Swish, 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 the wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. Bumble. Round four. The category is things that start with C. Question one. What reptile has the strongest bite of any animal in the world? Question two. What popular young children's show follows baby JJ and his siblings as they go to nursery, play, sing songs, explore, and learn? Question three. Where might you find elephants, tightrope walkers, jugglers, and clowns? Question four. What sweet carnival treat was surprisingly invented by a dentist? Question five. What is the fastest land animal in the world? Question six. What is the main ingredient in coleslaw? Question seven. The last car in a train is known as what? And here's the round four answers. Question one. What reptile has the strongest bite of any animal in the world? Crocodile. Thank goodness we don't have any crocodiles close to us, right? Question two. What popular young children's show follows baby JJ and his siblings as they go to nursery, play, sing songs, explore, and learn? Coco Melon. We haven't watched this show a lot in our house, but I think it's actually a pretty pretty uh, popular show. Question three. Where might you find elephants, tightrope walkers, jugglers, and clowns? Circus, this is a very obvious question. How many times you have you been to the circus? Twice? I think that's probably about right. I think you've all been a couple times. Question four. What sweet carnival treat was surprisingly invented by a dentist? Cotton candy. So this one hits pretty close to home because, Ren, what is your favorite food, your favorite candy? Cotton candy. Are you a pink gal or a blue gal? It depends. <laughs> Question five. What is the fastest land animal in the world? 
cheetah. Hmm, I had to look that one up. I thought it was me. I'm pretty yeah, you are an animal. <laughs> you are correct. It can go from zero to sixty miles an hour in three seconds. Question six. What is the main ingredient in coleslaw? Cabbage. Do you like coleslaw? No, because I don't like cabbage. <laughs> That's a good reason not to like coleslaw. I love coleslaw. Mom also likes coleslaw. <laughs> Question seven. The last car in a train is known as what? A caboose. So when we sit at a railroad crossing waiting for the train, do you watch out the window to try to see when the caboose is coming? No. Really? That's the best thing to do when you're watching I've trains. Ever been on a train. No, not on a train. When you're when you're waiting for a train to go past and you're watching it, waiting for it to go past, so you can oh, drive yeah. through. Yeah. Oh yeah, I. I that's I, what you're always watching for, so that we know when the train is done. I was thinking of a trolley, and I'm like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we don't live in a big enough place for any trolleys. Yeah. Round five. The category is ten. Question one. Nashville is the capital of which state? Question two. Ten years is also known as what? A decade, a millennium, or a tenium? Question three. Venus and Serena Williams are famous for playing which sport? Question four. What United States founding father is the topic of a smash hit Broadway musical and has his face on the $10 bill? Question five. What is the 10th month on a calendar? Question six, true or false? Nickels are worth 10 cents. Question seven, in the song, The 12 Days of Christmas, what did my true love give to me on the 10th day? And now the answer is for round five. Question one, Nashville is the capital of which state? Tennessee. Good one. Have you ever been to Tennessee? I don't think so. I've been to Memphis, but never Nashville. And it is on my to-do list as soon as possible. Question two, 10 years is also known as what? A decade, a millennium, or a tenium? I wish it was tenium, but it's decade. Right. Tenium is a word I just made up. <laughs> Question three. Venus and Serena Williams are famous for playing which sport? Tennis. Wait, Venus plays tennis? They both do. Yep. Who's Venus? Serena's the older sister. Oh, I thought it was a planet. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, it is that as well. Quinn and Ren are famous for playing which sport? Basketball. Probably. Volleyball. Probably like boxing or scratching each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sport. Question four. What U.S. founding father is the topic of a smash Broadway musical and has his face on the $10 bill? Alexander Hamilton. What's your name, man? Alexander, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. My name is Alexander Bender Hamilton, Hamilton and, and there's a million things I haven't done. Just you wait, just you wait. When he was, yeah, Quinn um, loves. I'm Hamilton. obsessed. She's obsessed. She could sing every song to the entire show, couldn't you? Yeah. Question five: What is the tenth month on a calendar? October. Question six: True or false? Nickels are worth 10 cents. False. Dimes are worth 10 cents. Get your money straight. Who is on the face of a nickel? 
James Madison? Thomas Jefferson's coming home. And who's on a dime? Nixon? Dwight D. Eisenhower. Question seven. In the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, what did my true love give on the tenth day? Ten lords a leaping. Ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eighty maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, sixty. Why are you saying sixty and eighty? <laughs> we have had so much singing in this episode. And a bonus question How many total gifts were given in the twelve days of Christmas? So if you added all the gifts up all together, how many total gifts were there? 364. That's a lot of gifts. I don't know what I would do with all those people. One day less than a year. That's a good way to remember it. One day less than a year. And now the questions for the final exam. Now remember, you've already heard these questions in this episode, but these are the hardest ones we had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers were. Question one. What color bell pepper has the most vitamin C? The red ones. Question two. What is the fastest land animal in the world? Ren and I already established it is not me. The cheetah is the correct answer. You are not even close. I can do zero to three miles an hour in 60 seconds. <laughs> I can do zero to three miles in 60 minutes. <laughs> Question three. What is a small flute called? A piccolo. So if a flautist plays a flute, who plays a piccolo? A piccolotus. I don't know. <laughs> Question four. What is the name of the U.S. national anthem? The Star Spangled Banner. I believe you and Quinn already let us we in a beautiful rendition yes. of that one. I don't think they need another one. Question five. What U.S. founding father is the topic of a smash hit Broadway musical and has his face on the $10 bill? Alexander Hamilton. How, you, we just can't. like You can't not sing that when you say his name. It's true. Even though they already heard that as well. You can't help yourself. Question six. What is the national vegetable of the United States? The pumpkin. This one was interesting. I did not know that we had a national vegetable. Question seven. Ten years is also known as what? A decade. And how many decades old are you, Dan? None your business. More than two decades. Less than five decades. Okay, fair. Ditto. When you hear hot cross buns on the recorder, you know it's the end. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We promise there will be less music next time. Yep. See you later. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have any ideas for questions or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com. This is Trivia for Kids where it's not just for adults anymore.